Welcome back. Can lifestyle changes reduce the risk of prostate cancer? That's the question today. And Dr. Ali Kaz Ryan is here with the weekly dose and the answer. Uh, we're obviously not going to be able to answer all of it, but there's some new lifestyle recommendations from the World Cancer Research Fund, and that's what we're talking about today. We're continuing the prostate cancer talk, but now we're going back to kind of prevention and and yeah, probably the most important question. Yeah. It's, uh, it's sometimes the most uh, overlooked and probably the most complicated because there's there's no. You do this, you get this. But some of the some of the answers that can potentially decrease the risk uh, are fairly common sense answers that can improve your health in general. Um, maintaining good health, having healthy diets, being active, uh, are are very common sense things that it seems we discuss over and over again for all sorts of different health issues. But they seem to fall true for improved health in general, improved cardiovascular health, improve, uh, uh, they lower the risk of heart attacks and strokes and things like that, but they also decrease your risk of cancer and they improve survivorship. Prostate cancer seems to be one of them. Um, and, and the specifics of them, uh, they found in terms of dietary uh, associations, people that have higher diets of red meat right. and higher uh, fats, especially high fat uh, dairy products, seem yep. to have uh, higher associations with prostate cancer, although it's not absolute. These aren't people that they have half the people eat uh, none of that stuff and half the people eat all of that stuff and have uh, c cancer associations. Right. It's, it's, not, it's not an absolute. I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't ever tell people it's A plus B equals cancer, like, you know, red meat plus or dairy plus this equals can to me I think of it as kind of like Russian roulette you know like we have so many things out there that, are, that could possibly kill us in this in this life and we get one of them and I just like to remove as many bullets from the sure. from and the chamber as possible and that's a good way to look at it and, and you're decreasing your risk and moderation is a great way to look at this so moderation is is, is key um, and again you look at obesity you know generally being healthy having a healthy a healthy way doing your best to maintain a healthy weight and being active are good health lessons to take uh, obesity is interesting so what they found in looking at studies, people who are obese actually have a lower incidence of prostate cancer, but when diagnosed, they may have more over a more aggressive prostate cancer. Yeah, seems because counterintuitive. You had, you had mentioned this is because it may be harder to get the the, the readings. So look at look at it this way. So doing a rectal exam may be more difficult if you're obese. Right. So it may not may not be as reliable. The other thing is, uh, some people hypothesize that uh, with obesity you may have uh, more blood volume. So could it make the PSA level more dilute? So that's may right. your PSA, PSA that's a little bit lower may be falsely low. So it may, may that low PSA be dilutional. So by the time we find the prostate cancer, could it potentially be more aggressive? I got gotcha. uh, So so that is something to potentially think about. Um, so in terms of other things that are preventative, you know, one thing that I know you don't like medications and things like. That, but a big study was announced at the AUA meeting this, this year, which, which again, uh, doesn't fall in terms of lifestyle choices and dietary thing, but it's actually an exciting follow-up of, of approximately 25 years of research on a medication called finasteride. Yeah. Uh, generally, a medication uh, that, that blocks the conversion of testosterone to its next step, usually taken to, to shrink prostates that are enlarged for urinary symptoms, but it's also medicine that's taken for uh, male pattern baldness uh, in lower doses. Uh, initially, in the studies that were done through time, and this, the, the newest uh, follow-up study is more than 18 to 25 years since the initial uh, beginning of the study, uh, found a 25% lower incidence of prostate cancer. And originally, the study was started to see if people were taking this medicine on a daily basis for seven years, and men old, older than 55, could they see a lower incidence of prostate cancer? And they found about a 25% lower incidence of prostate cancer. It got a black box warning from the FDA because they found the men who took it had a slightly but statistically significant risk of a higher risk prostate cancer when they compared them to the people that took the sugar pill. Okay. The newer study in follow-up for 30 years found that the people that took the pill actually did not die of their prostate cancer. They actually found a lower incidence of death from prostate cancer than the people that took the pill. So it kind of this follow-up study kind of closed the door on this argument that taking this pill could potentially kill you of an aggressive prostate cancer. So we now have a way of using a medicine that could potentially not just help your urination, but that could potentially be a protective measure for prostate and cancer. And that study was done with people who've already been diagnosed? No, these, no? Are, these are men who did not have a diagnosis of prostate cancer, uh, and it's more than 18,000 uh, men who were who were who were followed 
for, for now more than 18 years. So it's more than 300,000 years Was it meant, was it a pool of people who were, they've considered at risk? Random men. Totally random. So it's so a placebo versus uh, men who took the medication. So, so it's a, it's a, it was a random, it's called a prostate cancer prevention trial. And they followed them for time. And then they actually, in a very laborious uh, follow-up evaluation, they went and followed these men um, and originally the, the report, was, the, the study was uh, stopped soon in 2003 and a New England Journal paper came out because they saw such an advantage with a 21 to 25 percent lower incidence of prostate cancer in the, in the pool, but then that higher risk prostate cancer uh, that was statistically significant, meaning that if the men who took the pill got prostate cancer, their risk of a higher risk prostate cancer was present. Um, What's the takeaway for folks out there, something they can, uh, they things can do with this? Things to take away with this. Uh, you know, talk to your doctor if you're having, such if you're having urinary symptoms. Is there, there is a medicine called finasteride and it's cousin detasteride that you could take that, that not only shrinks your prostate and when you combine it with a medicine called Flomax, uh, which, and, and other medicines like it, which relax the prostate. So if you shrink it and relax it, you could potentially not only help your urination symptoms, but it does offer you a safe way of decreasing your risk of prostate cancer over time. Um, the other thing is make sure you're, you're maintaining a healthy weight, make sure that you're staying active and watch a diet. So diets that are higher in fruits and grains and vegetable make sure it allows you more health in general but also a decrease of your risk of cancer. We're out of time you got a walk coming up I uh, just want to make sure you get that information out it's right there on your screen that you can uh, come take part in. Zero Prostate Cancer is an organization that, that aims to, to create a generation that we don't deal with prostate cancer which is the second most common cancer uh, in general most common prostate non-skin prostate non-skin cancer in men this allows you to engage and, and, and the money that this is rated is allow men to not have to be alone in their Check battle it. against prostate cancer. Check October it out 6th. on his website, October 6th, and you can get more information from uh, Dr. Kazrian. Head to Dr. Kazrian's website, which is kazrianurology.com, or you can listen to him live and call into his radio show, The Conversation. It's on WOKV, and it airs every Saturday starting at 5 p.m.